So I was having a discussion with one of my connections on LinkedIn about my last video, three interesting fun facts about teenagers. If you haven't watched that video, you might want to check it out. And whilst we're having this discussion, he had said to me, I'm sure that you must be concerned about your teenager's risk-taking behaviors, seeing that the society is so evil these days. And I said to him, rather without thinking, my teenager's energies are sublime. They have no energies left for risk-taking behaviors. And then it occurred to me that I had to explain what sublimation is. And that gave the impetus for this video. Welcome to the Psychologist ND TV. If you are new to this channel, please click on the subscribe button and also click on the bell sign to enable notifications so you can be notified of all of our future videos. So today we're going to be discussing two things. What is sublimation? We're going to discuss what sublimation is and I'm going to tell you how you can use the psychological principle of sublimation to ensure that your teenagers do not engage in destructive, delinquent, and drowned behaviors, but they engage in societally productive and societally acceptable behaviors. Hang in there and let's see how you can do this. So first of all, what is sublimation? Now sublimation, like I mentioned, is a principle, a psychological principle introduced by Sigmund Freud, who we refer to as the father of psychology. It was introduced as a part of his psychoanalytical theory. Simon Freud spoke about defense mechanisms, ego defense mechanisms. Now, defense mechanisms are techniques that the ego part of our personalities use to respond to stressful situations. So when there's any situation that would evoke negative emotions, the ego part of our personality, which is like um, the one that regulates our, our personality, introduces different types of uh, defense mechanisms. Now, one of the defense mechanisms that the ego uses is displacement. So this mechanism has to do with channeling negative emotions uh, to an object that is less threatening. Okay, what we can sometimes call transfer of aggression. So when you go to work in the morning, and your boss makes you angry, maybe just when you were leaving work, your boss makes you angry because you know that responding to your boss negatively, displaying the negative emotions that you feel towards your boss is risky. You could lose your job, you do nothing. But as you get home to your children, you begin to display these negative emotions towards your children. So when you get home and your children have done really nothing wrong, and they say, welcome home, daddy, you begin to scold them, you begin to respond to them negatively. So that's transfer of aggression, and that's also displacement. Now, sublimation is a type of displacement, and this has to do with modifying the expression of primitive impulses into societally acceptable behaviors. Now, primitive impulses are crude and mostly societally unacceptable. When we act impulsively without thinking of the consequences of our behavior, our behaviors may not be societally acceptable. For instance, somebody who is uh, operating who's, um, who, in whom the eat part of the personality, the eat part of our personality is the primitive part of our personality. It's unrefined, it acts impulsively, and it deals primarily with meeting the needs of the individual without considering the consequences. Now we have three parts of our personality, the id, the ego, and the super ego. So the id is crude, it's crude and it responds, it responds without thinking. So if you're being controlled by your id and you see, for instance, you're a male and you see a sexually attractive female, instead of asking for the permission to befriend and have sexual intercourse with that female, the id will push you to rape that female. And of course, you know that that is a societally unacceptable behavior. If you rape anybody, it's a crime and you're liable uh, you, to be punished by the law. You know, so what the ego does, the ego mediates, you know, and moderates the impulses of the age and responds in a way that is societally acceptable. So let's go back to sublimation. Now, sublimation simply has to do with modifying these primitive impulses into societally acceptable behaviors, okay? And it is redirecting two major types of energy. 
sexual energies and aggressive energies into societally acceptable behavior. So you redirect your sexual and aggressive energies, like I said, that may be crude and impulsive, you redirect them into societally acceptable behaviors. Okay, now this is very useful. How can parents and how can teachers use the principle of sublimation to ensure that your teenagers do not engage in drowned behaviors, delinquent behaviors, destructive behaviors, societally unacceptable behaviors, but they can uh, you know, they respond and uh, behave uh, appropriately in the society. I could mention again, as part of Sy Sigmund Freud's uh, psychoanalytical theory, he mentioned that uh, teenagers have a reservoir of energy. He mentioned that teenagers have a huge reservoir of energy that they can either direct productively or destructively. Now, if you do not help your teenagers direct this available energy productively, they will direct it destructively. They will direct it into delinquent behaviors, into risk-taking behaviors, into destructive behaviors, stealing, drug abuse, cheating, fighting, rape, and all of these negative behaviors. So what do you do as a parent? What do you do as a teacher, as a school administrator? What we need to do is to create sufficient activities that our teenagers can direct both their sexual and aggressive energies into sufficient, acceptable, productive activities, such as humanitarian pursuits, such as intellectual pursuits, such as cultural pursuits and artistic pursuits, amongst others. So as a parent, as a teacher, beyond the intellectual activities in school, ensure that there are sufficient co-curricular or extracurricular activities that your teenagers can get involved in, okay, such as sporting activities, football, baseball, volleyball, cricket, name them. Ensure that there's available sporting activities, sufficient available sporting activities, and then your teenager will choose which one they, they're interested in and engage in. So by so doing, they use up the available, you know, energy, the available reservoir of energy in them at that time in sports. And of course, we know that sporting activities are acceptable. You can also ensure that they engage in humanitarian activities, create opportunities for humanitarian activities, such as making them gather things, gather games to go visit a, a, um, an orphanage, for instance, or maybe using them to clean up some parts of the street somewhere engage them in some humanitarian activities that uses up the available reservoir of energy and there's no energy left to engage in destructive behaviors. Now, one thing you can also do is help them learn some skills. Help them learn some skills. For instance, you can help them learn some entrepreneurial skills such as tailoring, such as um, plumbing, such as carpentry, whatever skills that they are interested in. Uh, in our society today, those skills will come in very handy in their future. They can use it to earn money. Of course, we know that uh, there's shortage of jobs in most of our societies. So when they, when they acquire these skills, they can use these skills to earn money and to be self-reliant. So encourage them to acquire useful skills, like I mentioned, such as tailoring, such as carpentry, such as plumbing, such as... Uh, woodwork, whatever skill, skills that they are interested in. And also, you can help them develop their talents. All of our teenagers have talents. So help them develop their talents. And when they develop these talents, which could be artistic or otherwise, they will have no energy. This uses up all of the available energy. These humanitarian pursuits, these intellectual activities, these cultural and artistic activities uses up all of the reservoir of energy that they have and they use it productively, pr productively and societally acceptably. And they will have no energies left to use destructively. So help them develop those talents. Is it playing a musical instrument like playing the violin, playing the keyboard? Is it uh, learning to knit? You know, whatever talents that they may have. Is it um, art, artistic talents? If you look behind me, you can see um, uh, an art work behind me here. This was done by my 10 years old son. This one was done by my 10 year old son. You know, when he started learning to paint, you know, newly. Uh, this helps them use up that available energy, like I mentioned. My daughter, some of them are into tailoring. Uh, some of them are into... Um, playing musical instruments, you know about the one that plays the violin and all that. The idea is to keep them engaged, productively engaged. The idea is to use up all of the available reservoir of energy, 
use it up in a societally acceptable manner so that there's nothing left to use up destructively or to use in engaging in risk-taking behavior. Have you learned something new today? If you have, why don't you click on the subscribe button and subscribe to the Psychologist NGTV. Now you know we come at you every week with interesting and educational facts, psychological facts and other facts about life. You don't want to miss out on it. Also click on the bell sign to enable notifications so that whenever we have a new video uploaded, you can be notified. It's been an exciting time with me here. Uh, it's always a pleasure sharing this knowledge and information with you. Until I come your way next week, I am... Dr. Blessing and Tamu. Have a beautiful day.